Hello, welcome back to Deepaji Talks. Today, I'm going to talk about such a personality who never studied the holy scriptures, yet his devotion was sung by many sacred texts. He was trained to hunt and kill, but his love towards his Lord was unparalleled. It is difficult even for divine poets to put in words the divine love of this ascetic. I would love to present the story of Kannapar, otherwise called as Kannapanayanar, who is known for his unparalleled devotion. In the kingdom of Pottapinadu was a village of Udupur, surrounded by beautiful hills. The place was occupied by the tribal people. The hunters from this tribe were like a herd of strong elephants who were up to any challenge. These hunters had no mercy or fear in their hearts and were led by a courageous leader, Nagan. He was trained to hunt, his expertise lay in archery, and he got the most suited job handed down by his ancestors as a leader of the hunters. But he must have performed great penance in some previous birth for he was soon to be associated with one of the greatest devotees of Lord Shiva. His wife too came from a family of archers and was seen sporting nails of tigers and skin of snakes as ornaments. Her name was Tattai. Nagan and Tattai did not have a child for a long time. As a last refuge, Nagan prayed to Lord Muruga for a child. By the grace of Lord Muruga, a child was born. With tears of joy, Nagan held his son like a huge mountain holding up a dark cloud. Nagan celebrated the occasion in a grand manner and the entire village was joyous. The marvelous kid was so strong that his own father found him heavy to hold. So he named the child Tinnan, meaning strong, and announced it amid roars from the entire community. Tinan grew up playing with animals and catching wild pigs, snakes, and wild dogs. He gave immense pleasure to his parents with his sweet childish talks. When he grew up to the age of being able to learn archery, his father selected an auspicious day for his initiation. Tinan learned the art with great interest. Thus, like the glow growing crescent moon, Tinan reached the age of 16. By now, age had caught up with Nagan and he was unable to perform his responsibilities of leading his tribesmen. A hunting expedition was long overdue. Nagan expressed his wish to Thinan to take lead and guide his people to prosperity. That day, Thinan started out with his hunting group even before the sun signaled a new day, armed with bow and set of arrows. He looked like the great Arjuna himself. With the tang of the bow, he sent the animals scurrying in all directions deep into the forest. The hunters ambushed these animals and rounded them up neatly. Soon there was a big heap of killed wild animals. Tinan, along with some of the hunters, went even deeper into the forest. They spotted a wild boar escaping the arrows of the hunters. Only three in the hunting pack were able to keep up with the wild boar, Tinnan, Nannan and Kardan. The boar eluded them expertly and drew them to the bottom of the sacred hill, Sri Kalahasti, where Lord Shiva was said to be worshipped by a spider, a snake and an elephant. The boar finally stopped under a tree, Tinan leapt forward and killed it with a small dagger he had. The three realized they had been drawn too far out and were separated from the rest of the group. Tinan asked Kardan to cook the boar they had just killed while he and Nannan went to fetch water from the river Swarnamukhi on the other side of the hill. While crossing the forest at the foot of the great hill, Tinan was overcome with an unexplainable emotion. Nannan told Tinnan about the shrine of Kudumi Tevar, a slang by which they addressed Lord Shiva, at the top of the hill and suggested they go and pray there. Thus, 
Tindan took his first step towards the Lord. Tindan's interest in Shiva increased with every step he took towards the top of the hill. Interest turned into affection. Once he saw the Lord, he drank through his eyes that wonderful sight of Kudumitevar. His heart was brimming with love. He lost control over himself. He ran to the Lord, overflowing with love. He hugged him. He kissed him. Ecstasy was oozing out of every pore in Tinan's body. He started speaking to the Lord, asking him a flurry of questions. Oh my Lord, in this dense forest full of wild animals, there is nobody to guard you. You stand all alone. Did you eat? Are you hungry? Then he realized somebody has offered him flowers and leaves which were fresh then. His friend Nandan clarified that once he and Tinan's father came for hunting, they saw a priest bathe the Lord and adorn him with flowers and said perhaps he might have done the same today too. Tinan understood the kind of worship that was being performed to the God of Sri Kalahasti. He wanted to do the same. So he rushed down the hill. Karan informed that the boar he had been cooking has finished and is ready to be eaten. Nanan informed Karan about the state Tinan had slipped into after seeing the Lord. He was no longer the leader of the hunters, but rather a slave of Lord Kudumitevar. Karan was shocked. Tinan then went on to select the best portions of the boar's body on an arrow tasted each piece in order to select the best ones and collected them in a leaf bowl. His companions decided that Tinan had gone crazy and said to themselves, he must be hungry for sure. Neither does he eat the food prepared, nor does he let us eat. Let us bring his father and others to find out what is wrong with him. But Tinan was least bothered about what was happening around him. He took the meat bowl in his hand, water from the river in his mouth to anoint the Lord and took beautiful flowers to offer by inserting them into his own hair. He rushed to the top of the hill, worried that the Lord would be very hungry. He removed the old flowers from the head of Lord Kudumitevar with his foot. Then he bathed him with the holy water from his mouth. He adorned the Lord with the flowers he had brought in his hair. He bowed to the Lord and offered the carefully selected food he had brought along. Yet he was not satisfied. He wanted to offer the Lord a lot more to eat. But he noticed the sun was setting. The fearless Tinan now feared that some wild animals may come and hurt the Lord Sri Kalahasti. So he stood vigilant all night beside him with his bow and arrow. When the sun rose early next morning, he prostrated before the Lord and went out to hunt for the Lord. As Tenen left for hunting, the regular devotee Shivogacharya, who worshipped the Lord every day in the way preached by the Holy Scriptures, came for his daily worship. He was shocked at the sight of meat before the Lord. He cried in horror, This must be the work of those dreadful hunters, he said. He cleaned the altar carefully. Then he bathed in the river and resumed his daily worship of anointing the deity, offering flowers, lighting lamps and chanting his name. He prostrated many times in front of the peerless Lord and returned to his hermitage. Now it's our hunter's turn. Out went Shivogacharya and in came our hunter Thinan. He hunted for deer, wild pigs and other animals till the sun was up in the sky. He cooked them. He tasted every piece that he had carefully selected to ensure that the Lord was offered only the best. He poured honey over the food to enhance his taste. Just like the previous day, he worshipped the Lord by offering, offering him flowers, food and water. At night, he did not sleep again and stood guard over his beloved God. This continued for a few days. Nandan and Kardan brought Tinan's father and others to persuade him to return, but they could not convince him. No force in this world could take him away from the luminous feet of, this, of his greatest God. While Tinan worshipped the Lord of Gods in the way he knew, Sivagocharya was desperate for a solution. 
he prayed to the Lord to reveal the person who was desecrating the place daily. Lord Shiva appeared in his dream and said, You can see the highest form of devotion tomorrow if you hide yourself in the temple. With feelings of fear and wonder mixed, the sage could not sleep for the rest of the night. He left his hermitage the next day as soon as the sun rose. He bathed in the Swarnamukhi river and worshipped Lord Sri Kalahastishwarar as he did daily. But today he did not return home. Instead, as per the Lord's instructions, he hid inside the temple waiting for the miscreant. Today, Thinan was clearly in a rush and had a strange feeling of being late. To show Srivagacharya the affection of Thinan, the Lord made his right eye bleed. When Thinan came, he was petrified to see the Lord's eye bleeding. He ran to him and tried to wipe the blood, but the bleeding would not stop. He brought some herbs in the forest to treat Lord's eye, but as expected, there was no effect. While he was thinking about how he, how he could help Lord's bleeding eye, Thinan remembered an old saying, eye for an eye. He immediately took his sharp arrow and plucked his eye and put it in the place of the bleeding eye of the Lord. He was ecstatic and filled with joy for his deed has stopped the blood. Was he setting the standards for devotion? While the gods and even rishis come to Lord Shiva to ask for boons, here was this human who just gave his eye to the Lord and was dancing in joy. He was merely from a hunting tribe. Yet, his deed was more sacred than that of heavenly beings. The beautiful Lord wanted to show the world the ultimate devotion. Now the Lord made his left eye bleed. Thinan was momentarily shocked. But now he knew the remedy and said to himself, I know the medicine for this. I have another eye that should cure this. But when he was about to pluck his eye out, he stopped for a moment and thought, What if I place my second eye on the wrong spot of the Lord after plucking it? Because he knew once he plucks a second eye too, he will lose eyesight completely. So he wanted to make sure he has a mark on the right spot of the bleeding eye. So he lifted his leg and placed his foot on the Lord's bleeding eye as a mark, and then he raised his arrow to take his other eye out. Words cannot describe this act. The Lord himself was not able to bear this great deed. The Lord cried out loud, saying, Oh, stop, Kanapa, stop! He appeared on that very spot, holding the Nainar's hand to stop him from plucking his eye. The sage, who was hiding in the temple, witnessed the great love of the devotee and hence understood why the Lord accepted meat as an offering. It is purely based on the devotion with which it was served. As you can see, the Lord addressed him as Kannapa because of this deed and also said that he was Arjuna in his previous birth. Before the Mahabharata war, Arjuna went into deep meditation on the advice of Lord Krishna to obtain Pashupatastra from Lord Shiva. To disturb his penance, Duryodhana sent a demon named Mukasura in the disguise of a wild boar. To protect his devotee, Lord Shiva appeared there in the form of a hunter and shot an arrow towards the wild boar. But at the same time, Arjuna also shot an arrow. Both the arrows pierced the boar and it died. The two argued about who had slain the boar, and the argument soon turned into an exchange of arrow fire. Soon Arjuna's quiver was depleted of arrows, but the hunter was untouched. Arjuna realized that the hunter was none other than Lord Shiva. So he fell at his feet and apologized for his behavior. Pleased with Arjuna's penance, Lord Shiva gave him the Pashupatastra he desired and also blessed him to be reborn as one of his greatest devotees in Kali Yuga as Kannapa and to be liberated from the cycle of birth henceforth. Thus Kannapa merged with Lord Shiva and attained liberation from birth. This story not only sets standards for devotion 
but also emphasizes that bhakti is the only way to attain salvation or moksha. I'll meet you again with another interesting story. Until then, it's bye from Deepa. Thank you and have a nice day.